There we go. We are recording. All right, what time is it there? Okay, another 30 seconds and then we'll get going and I'll share the first poll, which will be asking you about this first question here. Okay, I haven't seen that number change in a little bit, so I'm gonna get going with the first poll. So, in case you can't see the polls, I'm gonna read out the options for you. So the question is, what type of microscope is this? So what type of microscope does the image show? Is it a, called a lab microscope, an electron microscope, a light microscope, or a standard microscope? Guys, really impressed, got so many people voting already, well done. Over half have voted now. Fantastic. I'll give everyone a chance to vote. A range of answers, but definitely more in favour of one. Oh, we're up to 100 participants. Excellent, guys. Okay, 84% of people have voted and um, the majority voted for light microscope and it is indeed for light microscope well done everyone so um we don't when we when we use microscopes in your in your science lessons which i know you guys haven't unfortunately got to do yet um but you will when you go to school um we just we normally just call them microscopes but actually they are technically called light microscopes and we'll talk about why that is the case a bit later okay on to the next poll So, look at the labels on the diagram, which label is the objective lens? So, you have done a lesson on microscopes, you didn't have a webinar on it. So this is just to check how much we managed to remember from the lesson you did before. Okay, just about halfway with the vote. Just look carefully at the diagram, give it a guess. If you're really not sure. Okay, I'm gonna end that there. And X was the answer which the majority got again. Well done, absolutely fantastic. Okay, on to the next one. Which label is the stage? I'm not gonna give you quite as long for this one now. One of these labels is the stage, which one is it? Oh, quite an even spread of answers so far. And and that one, so it is Z is the stage, so this one here. Um, and the majority have got, got that, so well done. Okay, final question. How can you make an image under a microscope bigger. So A, do you zoom in, B, adjust the stage, C, use a higher objective lens, or D, turn the course focusing dial. Oh, I haven't launched it, there we go. And this is interesting, a lot of the answers are jumping up and down. Okay, well over half voted now, well done. Okay, I'm gonna end that now. So, a little bit less clear cut on this answer, quite a range of answers. The answer was to use a higher objective lens, so well done to the 45% of you that got that. We will be going into a lot more detail on this in the rest of the lesson, so don't worry if you weren't too sure. Okay. Um, so if you did have a go at the challenge, just keep your answer in your head for now because we're gonna go back to that in more detail shortly. Okay, so today's lesson, we're gonna be talking about and identifying the different parts of a light microscope and describing the function of each part. By the end of the lesson, you're going to be able, oh, sorry, I've just seen somebody's raised hand. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about your raised hands. Um, if you could just um, put it in the Q&A box if you have a problem. Um, 
please stop raising your hand. Um, okay, you're going to describe how and explain how to set up and use a microscope and you're going to be comparing different types of microscopes. And then we're going to be doing a little bit of calculations. So some of this will be familiar to you from the last lesson. What I really want us to focus on in today's lesson is using the correct terminology and keywords. So you'll notice that I'm going to be really particular about which words I use and when you're doing your answers, I want you guys to be the same. On the subject of keywords, there is one word that we do not ever, ever, never, ever use in science when talking about microscopes. That is the word zoom. Zoom is now only used for talking about the application that we're, used, that we're doing this webinar on. Zoom, so you would never say to zoom in if you mean to make something bigger with a microscope. We use the word to magnify or increase magnification because we are all scientists. Okay. So um, this is going to be your first task to do by, your, by yourself with the slides that, you teach, that the teacher puts on the classroom afterwards. Um, so I'm just going to talk through it first. Um, so here's a diagram of a microscope. Now I've included two different diagrams of microscopes because it's important for you guys to be aware that not every microscope diagram will look the same. So different textbooks, different exam papers, worksheets will have different diagrams but they will all have the same basic features. They just might be slightly in different places. So not to be too thrown off by that. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna talk very briefly through the parts and their functions. Again, this should be a recap and we will go into more detail on this afterwards. So this is the eyepiece lens. This is the part that you look down the microscope if you're looking, when you're looking at your specimen, which we'll go here. Um, it normally has a times 10 magnification. So this means that it makes whatever you're looking at ten time, look 10 times bigger than it actually is in reality. Um, and then here we have the objective lenses. So these are also used to increase the magnification. Um, so the light microscopes we use in school, they'll normally be times four magnification, times 10 and times 40. Um, so this is the arm. So this is just um, used to carry. So the arm and the base are what you use to carry the microscope. So you hold it by the arm, put your hand underneath the base. Um, this is the this is the stage which is what your sample goes on so it gets clipped on with these clips here. Um, so we have two dials, coarse focusing dial and the fine focusing dial. Sometimes they'll be found lower down on the microscope. The important thing to remember is that the coarse focusing dial is the bigger one and the fine focusing dial is the smaller one. So these can, um, if your image is blurry or not very clear or you can't see in very much detail, they make it more focused. So you can start by using the coarse focusing one. So this moves the stage by quite a lot to, to, to change the focus and make it more focused. And then the fine focusing dial just does it a little bit if you've only got to focus it a little bit more. Um, you can see on this microscope, there's a mirror. Um, sometimes there'll be a light source here. The mirror and the light source have the same function. So with the mirror, there may be a light source about here. And then the light reflects off the mirror and up through the specimen. Ooh. So that you can see it um, but alternatively there may just be like a small light bulb here so that light shines through as well okay so what i would like you to do as for your first task um, when you're completing this work is to study this image and then cover it up or close your computer down like minimize the window whatever it is whatever way you do it and then do a very very basic drawing of this microscope i don't need to spend a lot of time on this and attempt to label it without without having that prompt in front of you. And then as an extension, see if you can add in the functions as well. And then the, the key thing to do is then to go back and try and do the same thing a couple of days later, just to see how well you've retained that information. So it's just really important that you practice revision skills like this that can be used across a variety of topics. Um, if the thought of having to draw a microscope is really stressing you out, even though it can be really basic, you can just use this diagram and just practice writing down okay a is this for example so we're actually going to do one at the moment um, as a practice um, so for example having a look at this diagram here which label is the eyepiece lens is it a b c or d so this is an example of how you would test yourself, except you'd write it down on a piece of paper. And in terms of, um, in terms of showing this work to your teachers, um, some of you might be able to take a picture of where you've done it. 
um, or some of you might find that more difficult, but um, just talk to teachers about what the best way to hand that this activity in is. Okay, I'm going to end polling there. Well done, 90% of you knew that A was the eyepiece lens. Now that may be because we've just spoken about it. The thing that's interesting is to see if in a few days time you'd still be able to um, still be able to remember that. Well done, 91% of you that got that. Okay, moving on. Ooh. So, um, how exactly do we use a microscope? Now, unfortunately, like we said, if we were in a if we were in a classroom, you would all be able to do practicals with microscopes right now, so you'd really get to grips with exactly what all the different parts do in a real life context. Um, however, there are some fantastic online resources to help you. So we're not going to watch this video together. This is for you guys to look at when you're going back through the lessons yourself. But this we're going to look at together, and I also want you to look at it yourselves so i'm just trying to work out how i would get onto this from here ah i've already got it loaded up here so all you need to do is click on okay it's going to load again you just need to click on that link and something called a virtual microscope will load so let's just give it a minute so it just takes a little bit of time So this is using a light microscope, the same as you would in a, in a science lesson. Bear with me. Oh, it's very slow today. While that's loading, hi everyone. Um, some of you um, are popping up to say that you've done this before. This is a revision lesson and it's important to revisit stuff you've done before to make sure that you actually can remember it and learn it. Um, so I just want to clarify, some of you may have seen that video before or seen this website. This is a revision. Sorry, miss. And by the no, way... Perfect. Thank you, Ms. Moster, for clarifying that. Yeah, in case it wasn't clear from the beginning, the title of the lesson is a revision lesson. Um, so we, we will be recapping, but that is something that's really important to do. Okay, so a few different functions here. If you want to recap um, the parts of a microscope and what they do, you can click on learn and hover over the different parts, bearing in mind that there are some of them that we don't have to know. So make sure you're just exploring the ones that are on that original diagram. But we are now going to go to explore. So all you've got to do is click on explore. So this is this is a pretty amazing website. It's actually really realistic. So the first step is to click on this is our box of samples. So we I'm just going to choose plants, plant slides because we're all, we're all quite familiar with plant cells. But when you're exploring this yourself, feel free to choose whichever you like to have a look at. Um, so I'm just going to go to standard plant cells. Okay, so virtually this is now the view down our eyepiece lens. So it's as if you're looking down the eyepiece lens here. Um, so we can see that we can't actually really see anything. So the first, when you first set up your microscope, always have it on the lowest magnification. So this means you have it on the smallest objective lens, so the one that's labelled times four. Um, but we can't see anything, it's very blurry, so we need to we need to make the image more in focus. So we're going to move the coarse focusing dial, we're going to adjust it, which will as it have a watch of the stage, it's going to slightly raise the stage and we'll also bring our image more into focus. When you're using the coarse focusing dial, it's important not to just be looking down the, down the eyepiece lens the whole time because you can move it up so much that um, you could actually damage damage the sample and the glass there, but I'll talk about that in a moment. So definitely getting into more focus. Excellent, great. I don't even think we need to do, use the fine focusing one really, it's all there. Brilliant, so we can definitely see this, um, this telltale oblong shape of our plant cells that we're familiar with, with their rigid, so they're really uniform rigid structure because they've got that cell wall giving them support. Um, but they still not very big. We can't actually see very much there at all. Um, so I'm going to increase the magnifications. In real life, I'd be rotating the objective lens. 
So we can see it's rotated there. Quite cool. Okay, so they're definitely a lot bigger. They've been magnified. And let's see, do we need to adjust the focus at all there? Maybe a little bit. Okay, we still can't see a lot more than we could see before. So I'm actually going to increase the magnification again, so up times 40. So now we can see that we can start to see some of the organelles. So remembering that they're the parts inside a cell, organelles inside the cell, but they're actually quite blurry. So to make it less blurry and more in focus, um, I'm going to use coarse focusing dial first. And that seems to have made it worse. Again, so I'm just going to use the fine focusing one and see if we can get it a little bit. There we go. So we can see that those cell wall lines have become a lot more defined. Um, yeah, so that's an example of how you, you adjust the magnification. And then um, after that, you can put it in in focus again. You can also adjust the light, making it brighter or less bright, but not very necessary. So in our light microscopes in school, we don't have times 100, but here we do. So we're going to try it. Um, so apparently you need, to add, you need to add emotional for this. However, I also want it so we can see that the magnification is greatly increased. And I also want to show you guys this because it shows the dangers of not watching when you're using your coarse focusing dart. So we've now irreparably damaged our little glass cover slip and sample which is not what we want to do so when you are using them in real life be careful with them but obviously when you're using this just try all the different settings out see what happens okay so i want you guys to have a play around with that in your own time um have a look and see what different samples you can find um so here's just a summary of the different steps so it's important to always start on the lowest magnification and then this stage on the lens should be as far as possible apart so then you can just adjust it slowly so start on the lowest magnification oh, focus it and then if you still want it to be bigger so you want to increase the magnification then you change the objective lens focus again as necessary and you keep going until it's the image is as big as you want it to be and it's focused you can see it in detail so I'm not going to read through all of this now, but you can look at it in your own time. Okay, so we have a couple more polls for you. So if you can't see the polls, the questions are on the screen, but I'm going to launch this first one here. So what does changing the objective lens from times 4 to times 10 do? Does it A, increase magnification, B, focus the image, C, zoom in, or D, adjust the stage. Okay, majority in favour of one in particular. Okay, I'm going to end following there before any more get added to the third one. So the answer was increase magnification. Well done. Now, there are 8% of you who maybe, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, maybe you joined late on this webinar maybe you missed that first slide but just a reminder when you're looking through this go back and look at slide four because we never ever use the word zoom when talk when talking about um increasing the magnification on a microscope so i do understand what you mean you mean to make it bigger but you need to say to make the image bigger or to increase the magnification um okay well done 82 percent of you that got that um, and luckily for the 8% of you that said zoom in, I cannot see who the 8% of you were. Okay, um, next poll. What does the coarse focusing dial do? Does it A, magnify the image, B, focus the image, C, make the light brighter, or D, make the image smaller? Lovely, nice and quick. That's well over halfway already. You're only 18 seconds. It's, while they're, they're doing that, can I just say again for people, pressing the raised hand button doesn't do anything in this type of webinar. It's for a different type of webinar. Oh, lots and lots of people of pressing the raised hand button. All it does is tell me you've raised your hand, but nothing else happens. If you've got a question, you've got to type it in the Q&A box. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. Oh, we're still getting raised hands, including some that I teach. Hmm. Didn't think they found those instructions that difficult. <laughs> um, 
Wonderful. Right, end poll there. 82% shows focus the image, which is absolutely correct. Well done, everyone. Right, moving on. Okay, so this is going to be your second task to do, not now, but to do when you're looking through the slides itself. Um, so describe the stages for looking at a sample down the microscope, including focusing and increasing magnification. Use the correct terminology. So for this, I would recommend going back and having a look at this slide, but um, to help you and looking back at our keyword slide from the, from the beginning and then um, putting it into your own words and using full complete sentences. So it doesn't need to be very long, just a short few lines, just a short few lines like this, make sure you hit four marks. Okay, so how can we calculate magnification power? So we spoke about the fact that the eyepiece lens typically, and in the microscopes we use in school, the eyepiece lens has a times 10 magnification, but the objective lens can have, depending on which setting you have it on, it can be times four, times 10, or times 40 magnification. So how does that affect the image overall? Obviously, it's going to be affected by a combination of the eyepiece lens and the objective lens. Um, so there's a calculation that we can do. Um, to calculate the total magnification, you multiply your eyepiece magnification by the objective magnification. Now, I thought I had a poll for this, but it seems I don't. So I just want you to all have a think about what, what calculation it is we need to do and what the answer would be. So I'll give you a couple of seconds do that. Okay, so we just have to do times 10 times times 40, um, meaning our overall magnification is going to be times 400. So well done, those of you that got that. Um, on to the next one. We do have a poll for this one. So we can see that we're on a, a different setting on the objective lens. Our eyepiece lens is still times 10. Our objective lens is times 10 also. So I'm going to release a poll for you. And oh, is that what I want to do? No. Um, calculate the total magnification. Is it times 20, times 1000, times 10, or times 100? Oh, excellent. Loads of you very quick off the mark. Well done. Wonderful, I'm gonna end it there. Okay, 76% so of you got that it was times 100, well done. So um, you're multiplying these two numbers together. So that gets 100. Um, oh. Okay, so there are other calculations that we can do. So when you're looking at a sample down, down a microscope, you have no idea how big that actual cell would be in real life or whatever it is you're looking at but there are actually ways that you can work that out. If you know the magnification and you know the size of the image, so this means the size of what you can see down the eyepiece lens, then you can calculate the actual size, which means the size of the cell in real life. So this is an equation triangle. You should be familiar with this from when you did a speed distance time work. Um, so just to recap how it works, this, of, if they're next to each other, it means multiply. If there's one over the other, this line means divide. So it's I divided by M or I divided by A. Um, so you can work out what calculation is you have to do by taking your finger and covering up the one you want to find. So in our case, if we want to find the actual size of the cell, cover up A, and then we have image size divided by the magnification. So let's put that into practice with a couple of examples. So, um, so this is meant to represent what we see down the eyepiece lens, hence the circle. So you're just being asked to calculate the um, to calculate the, the actual size of this cell here, the one that's been labelled. So we've been given the image size, it's 40 millimetres, and it tells you in the corner here the magnification is times 100. So do I have a poll for this? Yes, I do. So um, I'm going to give you a chance to work this out. So what is the actual size of the cell. Bear with me. Okay, is it 400 millimetres, 0.4 millimetres, 40 millimetres, or 4 millimetres? I don't know if you guys can see me moving that. I hope not. I'm trying to get out the way of the thing. Um, 
Oh, again, quite a range of answers. So first think about what calculation it is you need to do. Think about what the, that information is. So we have the image size here and the magnification here. Okay, so just over half voted. Give another couple of seconds for those that haven't voted yet. Okay, lovely. I'm going to end up there. Well done. So 45% of you got that it was 0.4 millimetres. I'm going to explain why that is the case. Um, so if image size is 40 millimetres, the magnification is 100. We then, so then we just need to do 40 divided by 100, which is 0.4. And it's really important that you include the same unit, so 0.4 millimetres. Well done, those of you that got that. Okay, so we can actually also um, rearrange the equation by using this triangle. So this time we want to find out the magnification. So you can see we've covered up the magnification. We've been told that the actual size of the cell in real life is 0.05 millimetres. And we can see that here it's been measured as 20 millimetres in the image. So we're now going to do image divided by actual size. So can you all um, have a go at calculating the magnification? So image divided by actual size. And then, oh, I'm going to put a pole back up. Huge spread of answers here. So just about half have voted, well done. Okay, another couple of seconds. So if you if you haven't the time to try them now, obviously feel free to try them again in your own time when you're when you're doing the work afterwards. Okay. Um, why is it said that there's two correct answers there? That's very confusing. Okay, well let's work through this together. So um, so we had 32 percent of you old because it was the same one. So let's work through this together. So our actual size of cell in real life is 0.05 millimeters and the image size is 20, so you need to do 20 divided by 0 0.05, which I'm going to do my calculator here. So from that, 20 divided by 0 0.5, you would get 400, so it is a D times 400, so well done for those of you that put this third option up, 32% of you. So it's really important to watch out for your zeros. Okay, this one you're going to do in your own time um, when you're looking back at the lesson. So you're again calculating the actual actual size, so actual length of the cell. So remember, you need to cover up actual to do that. So I'll do that in your own time. Okay, so the final part of this, we're going to talk about electron microscopes. So which of these Im images was made using an electron microscope, A, B or C? I've got another poll for you here. Or is it all of them? Maybe it is. Okay, that's 72% voted, so I'm going to end polling here. Well done, 57% of you got that it was B, which is absolutely correct, excellent. So the reason we know this is because um, we can see in much more detail, so we can see all the organelles within the cell, whereas in these two the light microscope we can't, it's also in black and white, which is um, another important feature. So um, I know you're familiar with electron microscopes from last time. This is what one looks like. So we can see much bigger, all connected up to computers and everything, much, much bigger and more complicated and high tech than a light microscope. They're very expensive. So it means um, schools generally don't have them and you wouldn't normally like have a lot of them in one place. So there's advantages of using them as we saw from the image. 
you can have a higher magnification so they can see smaller things. They also have a higher resolution, so that means you can see in more detail. Um, however, they can only look at dead tissue and they are very expensive. So that is today's revision lesson finished. So hopefully that was a nice refresh for you. Um, just a reminder that these are the four points you should now feel confident with. Um, any questions, obviously feel free to email me or your class teacher. Um, when, you're answer, when you're giving your answers, make sure you're really using these keywords. And um, here are the tasks that you need to do. So just to make it really clear, you'll need to complete the tasks on slide three, slide seven and slide 13. And you'll also be shared a Kahoot with, um, by your teacher on the classroom. There is a challenge um, part, which will be GCC exam questions on microscopes. So if you fly through the rest of this and you think, I was really, really confident with microscopes, I don't need to spend a lot of time on this, but I want to challenge myself, um, definitely, definitely have a go for these. The teacher will share them with you. So we actually do have one last poll before we finish. Just to be really, really clear, what word do we never use when talking about microscopes? Is that word zoom? Is it magnify? Is it resolution or is it focus? Just to see how many people have been paying attention. So we've got 67% voted, 70% voted, well done. And so far the results are looking very good. Okay, that's the director's voted there, so I'm going to end it there. Well done, it's absolutely correct. The answer 100% of you got is we never use the word Zoom when talking about microscopes. Okay, so um, that's us done. That's us done for today. So your teachers will post these slides and in your classroom um, soon, straight after this, as soon as they can. And then the webinar recording will be uploaded um, shortly later today most likely and the Kahoot will be in a classroom too as well as the exam questions okay when you if you don't have any if you have any other questions put them in the box if you don't have any questions um you may leave and good luck with the work thank you all for attending there's no questions for this, by the way great so if you think of one later that you didn't ask, you can also email me or your class teacher. Lots of hand raising going on still. Yeah, I'm just removing people miss that aren't leaving. So you need to do <laughs> the webinar now. Otherwise we'll just help you do that. How do I do this too, I think? Oh, yes. So bye guys, we're just removing you now, if you haven't removed yourself, have a lovely day. Oh, not going to remove this mic yet. Miss, you can stop recording now, by the way. Oh, thank you. Do I do this? Stop recording.